ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ಭಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವದೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿತ್ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 in the in the discussion of raga dvesha likes and dislikes it is knowledge and understanding that reduces the intensity of raga and dvesha he said it is not through knowledge and understanding alone the intensity of raga dvesha can be reduced first is we understood raga dvesha a emotional slave we have seen that sequence i'm not going through the sequence again last week we studied the the sequence <clears throat> emotional slavery is a state where your mind becomes harmful to you your own mind becomes harmful to you therefore we have to avoid the emotional slavery and avoiding the emotional slavery is managing handling raga dvesha through knowledge and understanding the vega reduces vega means the the force one thing is eliminating raga dvesha another thing is managing the forces of raga dvesha eliminating raga dvesha is sanyasa etc we are not talking about that we are not talking about we are not talking about eliminating raga dvesha we are talking about managing handling raga dvesha so let us be very clear on the angle from which we are discussing but we want to eliminate raga dvesha sir correct if you want to eliminate raga dvesha you have to become a sanyas because only a, a only at the level of sanyas raga dvesha can be eliminated now we can only we can only manage it what is managing it the fluctuations of emotions will happen emotional disturbances will happen but emotional slavery can be avoided that's where we distinguish between the two last week itself the emotional disturbance versus emotional slavery now managing raga dvesha handling raga dvesha means handling the emotional emotional slavery emotional disturbance is a minor problem when compared to emotional slavery now we are working backwards where are we working backwards now we are talking at a level where there is an emotional slavery from that emotional slavery we want to work back to emotional disturbances emotional disturbance from emotional slavery you cannot straight away hope to become elimination it won't happen you can uh, that's greed from emotional slavery wanting freedom from raga dvesha right away is nothing but greed the same greed that uh, makes a human being pursue worldly matters the same greed will make a human being pursue spiritual growth also so greed as such doesn't go that's why we say distinguish between emotional dependency and emotional emotional uh, <clears throat> emotional disturbance sorry emotional disturbance and emotional slavery now we are discussing how to what knowledge will eliminate the emotional slavery so that you can handle the emotional disturbances that is what uh, i said knowledge takes care of that how a few things a human being can attempt in fact 
a human being can attempt these few five things a human being can attempt. The first thing is a constant analysis viveka. First thing is viveka. Viveka means remembering that emotional slavery will make you useless and emotional slavery is harmful to you. Viveka. A constant discrimination on this understanding. Again, that's where we did, all, uh, that's where last week we did the whole lot of analysis. Viveka means going through this analysis again and again and again. So that is one method. That is one step. And I say one step means not sequentially. You can mix match and do however you want to. But there are a few things that can be tried out. That's what I'm trying to say. Not in a sequential manner. Second is a, a powerful resolve. A powerful resolve is what is known as sankalpa. You take a sankalpa. What is the sankalpa? From emotional disturbance, I will not convert into emotional slavery. From emotional disturbance, I will not convert into emotional sl slavery. It is a strong... Sankalpa is nothing but a strong auto-suggestion. You have to keep repeating it to yourself. First is the discriminatory analytical process what we studied in the previous session. The second method is Sankalpa. And by Sankalpa, what is meant is, by Sankalpa, what we mean is this. A strong, powerful, Sankalpa in English has to be translated as auto-suggestion. This auto-suggestion, the Sankalpa will bring an alertness. The Sankalpa will bring an alertness. So that, that emotional slavery doesn't happen. The third thing is, A Pratipaksha Bhavana. Pratipaksha Bhavana is nothing but diversion technique. Pratipaksha Bhavana means looking at it from another angle, distracting the mind. So, wherever emotional slavery happens, you become a victim of Raga Dvesha, you, you distract yourself. That is called Pratipaksha Bhavana. Sometimes Viveka will work, sometimes Sankalpa will work, sometimes Pratipaksha Bhavana will work. That's why we are giving four or five options. Not everything will work at all the times. One will work. So you can try. So the third, the 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 third is Pratipaksha Bhavana. What is Pratipaksha Bhavana? Pratipaksha Bhavana is Nothing but distracting yourself, diverting yourself which works at times. That's why we say get up and do something. Instead of sitting and asking why, 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 what happened, what happened, what happened. Don't go on theorizing it. Get into some action and divert yourself, distract yourself. Because Viveka is not working. When Viveka is not working, distraction will work. Are you able to follow the third? Fourth one, <clears throat> fourth one is Satsanga, good association. Good association means remembering associating with those who inspires you, motivates you. That is satsang. Again, remembering, associating with those who inspire. It could be, it could be a Purani character like Lord Rama. It could be remembering Rama. It could be, it could be studying something about any one of these great characters. All this is called satsang. Remembering such people will bring you 
energy for what? If they have done it, I could also do it. That's why it's called satsanga. Satsanga means looking at them, you get inspiration. Are you able to follow? Looking at them, you get inspiration. What is inspiration? If if they could do it, you could also you could also do it. What will satsanga teach you? Satsanga will teach you this. By consistent effort, just as those few gotten out of the Raga Dvesha, I can also get out of it. That motivation comes, that inspiration comes. If all that I have to do is, if I was, if I am working the way that they are working, definitely I will also get to that growth. The fifth one is the last one, the prayer. It's called Prarthana. What is Prarthana? Prayer. Praying to the Divine. Praying to the God. Give me the strength. Give me the strength. Sometimes prayer will work. Sometimes Pratipaksha Bhavana will work. Sometimes Viveka will work. Sometimes Satsanga will work. Sankalpa will work. At times, nothing will work also. That, uh, that, possibility, uh, that possibility is also there. Where at times, nothing also will, will work. St uh, still, you have to still you have to pick yourself up and deal with Raga and Dvesha. This is as far as the Raga Dvesha is concerned. With this, we will, uh, we will conclude the discussion on Raga Dvesha and we will move on to worry and anxiety. Yeah, Anshu, worry and anxiety. Worry and anxiety. Another disturbing attribute of the mind is worry and anxiety. The mind is worried over what has happened in the past and anxious as to what will happen in the future. That, that causes mental agitation and sorrow. It is worry and anxiety that saps human energy. It tears a person apart and you become tired and fatigued. You believe that work tires you. Work can never tire you. It is your worry and anxiety that causes fatigue and you are unable to carry on with your business. You need stimulants like coffee to energize you during work. You need rest and recreation by the end of the day. You need a two days break at the end of the week, the vac a vacation at the end of the year. With all these breaks and Fatigue and boredom still plagues you through life. Ironically, the child is never tired or bored. Though a child is weak and an adult strong, yet you find children effervescing with passion and action. They cannot remain quiet even for a moment. The reason for this flood of energy is the absence of worry and anxiety. Children are not worried over the past or anxious for the future. That provides them all the energy to be bustling with activity. Learn this lesson from children. Use your intellect to free yourself from worry and anxiety. That will render your life energetic and entertaining. Worry and anxiety. Another aspect of the mind. Even though these two words worry and anxiety can be interchangeably used, 
most of the times they use it interchangeably but here we are trying to distinguish the two distinct aspects what is it worry is in relation to the mind's uncontrolled running into the past anxiety is a a constant again they say constant worry over over the future is anxiety look at the that's the, the, the otherwise uh, uh, otherwise what words do you use isn't it but then what are these two things worry and anxiety so two things the mind uncontrollably moves one is the past another is the future in relation to the past it will be always something negative in nature it will go to we have seen this any number of times when it goes to the past when the mind goes into the past it will never go into the blessings of the past it will always go into it will always go into the negativities things which didn't go in your which didn't go in your way that uh, that one or two things that hurt you so much everything hurts in life sir how can it be if nothing and everything doesn't hurt you in life one or two things hurts definitely and that one or two is because of your own making not because of are you able to follow therefore worry is the mind's uncontrolled lingering of the past negativities so what is the definition of worry the definition of worry is the mind's uncontrolled lingering into the negativities of the past because it is continuously lingering over the negativities of the past in one end it will automatically hope or dreaming about the other end what is the other end the opposite of it which is the better future and there will be constant anxiety over that better future will it happen will it happen will it happen what is the guarantee that it will happen even if it happens how long it will be there isn't it first of all will it happen second is if it happens how long will it be how long will it be there and somebody comes and says no it will be there for a long period of time and then the and then you will ask how do you know it will be there for a long period of time what guarantee you can what guarantee you can give for that this is the minds moving in extremes we have seen this mind is like a pendulum moving in extremes what are the two extremes the past and the future two words worry and anxiety is used to talk about this movement of the past and the future and always if you see what you call as a better future will be the exact opposite of your past if you have observed in life whatever you call as better future will be the exact opposite of your of your past in the past if there has been no persons at all future will be lot of people around you if lot of people were around you in the past better future will be i just want to go to a place where there is no people at all i can just do what i want in the past if i am living in a place full of noises better future is what is better future a place where there is no noise at all shanti sir the place only is like so quiet so quiet so shanti so worry and anxiety 
represents the two extreme movements of the mind. These two extreme movements of the mind causes this extreme movement saps your energy. Saps your energy means a fatigue. Fatigue. Fatigue means a lack of motivation, a lack of inspiration to do anything. That is fatigue. You will just not feel like doing anything. If you, if it is let, if it is, if, if it continues without controlling it in any way, hmm, if it continues without you controlling it, handling it, managing it in any way, what happens? This worry and anxiety unattended over a period of time brings about a kind of stubbornness. The stubbornness in modern day language they call as depression. I am depressed, sir. I am depressed today. I am depressed today means what? I will not do anything. Depressed today means I will not do anything. What is anything, even the minimum thing that a, that a human being has to do? What? Bathing. That also they will not do, isn't it? There are people, that's why they say signs of depression, they ask. Bathing. Is bathing happening? Ah, every, ah, then, then it is not that extreme, isn't it? It, 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 it makes a person so... <clears throat> so inactive that they will not do or they will not want to do what they are supposed to, what they are supposed to do. Because they say, I have no strength left. I have no energy left. And take the person to the doctor, the doctor will say everything is alright. There is no problem. The person will come back saying, the doctor is wrong. The doctor don't understand. Or if you are in my shoes, you will understand. What is your shoe? People ask, uh, if you are in my position, what will you do, sir? I will say exactly what you are doing is what I will do. What different I can do? Because what is your shoe? Moving in extremes. A person moving in extremes will be will be sapped with energy. So fatigued. So, uh, so fatigued all the time. In order to get rid of the fatigue, motivation is required. Strength is required. Energy is required. That is where uh, something we keep doing to something we have to keep doing to bring the energy back. This is worry and anxiety. The mind's movement in extremes. The mind moves in the extremes of past and future. Past is that which is done and you cannot do anything about it. Only thing that you can do is not to repeat it again. That's all you can do in relation to the past. Again, in relation to the past, past is that which is, which is done, happened. Now it is done and happened. You can't do anything about it now. All that you can do now is what? Not to repeat it. But the mind will go on repeating it. The mind will go on repeating it and still keep complaining the same. Are you able to follow? So this is in relation to the worry. In relation to the anxiety, what is anxiety? Anxiety is nothing but asking for proof of result even before action is done. That is anxiety. 
anxiety is even before buying the lottery ticket you want to know which number will which number will win isn't it you know in uh, most of the countries they have this lottery no what do they call this here we used to call it lottery there i don't know what they call loto or some some name they call and always a combination of numbers always a combination of numbers long time it happened one family known to me said sir can you pick uh, two combination of numbers and give i said i said first i didn't understand what is this combination of numbers i said what is this combination of numbers you are asking me to we can choose no no sir you know in this combination this this is and uh, and uh, this uh, week after week after week it's going on it is it, the 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 money is just getting added up to the next month i don't know monthly weekly i don't know added up added up added up you give two pairs of numbers i said i will never ever do that i said why if i know that number i will keep it to myself first i will buy a lottery why will i tell you no yes ji 22 million dollars isn't it 28 million i i will not even know how to write all the zeros and convert it into indian rupees properly first <laughs> 28 million dollars converted into indian rupees 0000 vijayarangan ellam potu to and then if somebody is coming and asking give me that number why sir anyway you don't need all that sir you are very detached you, you don't need all this give me these two pairs i will i said uh, if i give that number and and if you didn't win i'll become an unspiritual person because i don't have siddhi powers now isn't it supposing i give that number and if the numbers didn't come what will happen to me aparna i will not be a, i will not be a guru anymore no i will not be a spiritual person anymore oh no, you also like us only yeah you also don't know we also don't know nobody also it gives and if you win what will happen don't go and associate with that person because that person will be last for a percentage share now isn't it what is what is anxiety are able to understand anxiety what is anxiety anxiety is asking for the proof of the result of the action even before you do the action that is anxiety so one is simply worrying about the mind helplessly going into the helplessly going into the past 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 every time in the present if your mind goes into the past you are redoing it again every time in the present if your mind is going into the past what are you doing you are committing it again and again and again now you, you 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 go on committing it again and again and again when can you when will you ever get out of it first of all would it be possible to get out of it in the first place if you are continuously doing it that's why we say the past is fight accompli it's all done nothing can be nothing can be done about it the bullet has left the barrel all that you need to all that you can do is what in relation to the present you can take a sankalpa a vow as to not to repeat it again as to not to do it again that is in relation to the worry what is in relation to the anxiety in relation to the anxiety anxiety can be sorted out only if proofs are given giving proof is like a drunken man's promise remember that giving proof is nothing nothing but a drunken person making a promise
you know, in these international flights, they give uh, they give drinks, isn't it? Liquors they give. And uh, sight of it only, I am fainting. Where will I even? Where, where will even smell it or drink it? Isn't it? When I see the bar, um, when I see that only I faint. That's my condition. Yeah. So the person sitting next to me will say, Ungilvana uh, Masar, he will ask. You don't uh, you don't drink? I say, no, I don't. When they come, this you take and give it to me. Meaning he will he will tell <laughs> he will tell me. He will tell me, you take it and you give me. I'm not, I'm not saying yes or no. I'm still looking as, at him continuing the conversation. I'm just looking at him to continue the conversation. Next thing. When we get down in Chennai, sir, he's tempting me now with future things now. When we get down in Chennai, I will do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Wow. Look at the... Look at the photo. I have to buy him something where he is going to get intoxicated and, and, and in that intoxicated state that, that, that person will hold on to his promise. If you believe in that, even without uh, drinking, you are intoxicated already, isn't it? Supposing somebody believes in that and picks up, and, and picks up a quarrel at the end. Are you able to follow? What is anxiety? Anxiety is asking for proof, demanding proof, dependent on proof. Asking, demanding, insisting, dependent on proof. All this creates anxiety. Will it happen? Will it happen? Will it happen? God only knows whether it will happen or not, isn't it? Okay. Simplest example of anxiety. What is the simplest example of anxiety? You call the person, second ring is going, third ring is going, answer what will happen? That is anxiety, isn't it? You are calling, second ring is going, third ring is going, fourth ring is going, no answer. This is called anxiety. What is anxiety? Will it happen? Will it, would it happen? Will it happen? Would it happen? Asking for proof is exactly wanting to be all-knowing. Asking for proof is nothing but wanting to become all-knowing. Is it possible to become all-knowing? You, there, there, there is no possibility of becoming all knowing. It means the, the it means the anxiety has no meaning at all. That's how you understand worry and an anxiety. Worry is in relation to the in relation to the to the past. Why I did it? I should not have done it. I feel so guilty that I did it. And everybody around you also will sit and support. <laughs> That's why we say the continuation of worry will result in guilt. What is guilt? I should not have done it. I don't know why I did it. I should not have done it. I don't know why I did it. I should not have done it. I did it. I should not have done it. I did it. Worry is the wise person of the present punishing the past ignorant person. That is worry. The person of the present, the wise person of the present punishing the past. Ignorance it is. Why a person did it? Why does anybody, why does anybody do, why does anybody, it is because of Ignorance. 
instead of replacing with knowledge and moving on, the mind simply keeps worrying about the past, resulting in guilt. So worry, worry, uncontrolled will result in guilt. Now, once you become guilty, what happens? Once you become guilty, once you become guilty, you will start looking for a savior. Somebody has to come and save you now. Somebody has to come and protect you. That's why most of the people will instill guilt first. Because once, once I convince you that you are guilty, that's it. And for this Janma, you will be dependent on me only now. Why? Because you are guilty and I am the only one who can save you of the guilt. You are guilty and I am the only one who can save you of the guilt. Are you able to follow? Vedanta comes and says, the worry, worrying about what happened the past moment yesterday or 10 years back, 10, uh, 20 years back is foolishness. Why? Being ignorant in the past, what else you could have done? That's what you could have done. I did it in the past, sir. What will be the karma for it? By you mentally reliving it and if you don't intensify it, it will be a manageable karma. If you relive it mentally and go on intensifying the doing, it will become unmanageable. Are you able to follow? That's how you continue to perpetuate it even in the present. That's called worry of the past. Then anxiety of the future. What is anxiety of the future? We said anxiety means dependent on dependent on proof, isn't it? Proof is the fear of the unknown. Anxiety is when you cannot handle the unknown. Anxiety is the fear of the unknown. The future is unknown. Because of the fear, we try to somehow make the unknown known. Somehow we want to make the unknown known. Why does a human being go to a horoscope person the unknown future must be must be known. So, who will make the unknown future known? Who can make you do that? Who can make you do that? Nobody can make you do that, including God. Why? Because action is not yet done today. Because action is not yet done today, what the tomorrow is going to be is, is, is always unknown. Therefore, in Vedanta, they say, if you really, really want to have a secure future, what you should do? Worry about your today. Because your tomorrow is not going to come out of your calendar. Your tomorrow is going to come out of your today. Because your tomorrow is going to because your tomorrow is going to come out of your today, focus on the today. Anxiety takes attention from the today and puts it on the tomorrow. As a result of which, what happens? Constantly agitated. Always in a state of always in a state of disturbance. So this is another devastating quality of the mind, devastating nature of the mind, worry and anxiety. Worry and anxiety replace it with guilt and fear. Worry and anxiety, past and future, guilt and fear. A person who is, imagine a person who is drowned in guilt and fear, what energy that person will have? Are you able to follow? 
So, so keep replacing it. You will understand it better. That's why I'm just using it. Uh, uh, what is meant by the word worry and anxiety is past and future. What is what is another way of looking at it? Guilt and fear. Guilt and fear. The flight is taking off. We are sure it will land, no sir. Who knows, including the pilot, nobody knows whether it will land or not. It is a collective karma of the pilot and the occupants of the plane that makes it to land or continue to fly, isn't it? It is a who, who knows. So what is, what is worry and anxiety? Worry and anxiety is nothing but guilt and fear. So you can call it worry and fear, or you, sorry, you can call it worry and anxiety, you can call it past and future, or you can call it guilt and fear. That's why we say guilt means you will feel so bad, helplessly you will do it again. You will feel so bad and, and, and you will go back and do the same thing again. Of what use is that? Guilt. So worry. Imagine a mind that is disturbed by guilt and fear. Imagine a mind that is constantly affected by this guilt and fear. What that mind can do is that will that mind be capable of doing anything? Or only one thing it can do. What? It will get into sadness, depression. That's all it can. Nothing meaningful come. Therefore, he says, it takes away all the energy out. So, worry and anxiety means guilt and fear. How to overcome guilt? Understanding that uh, this is, is the consequence of ignorance. Now that I have become wise, I will not do it again. Again, are you able to follow? Again, I repeat. How to overcome guilt? I was ignorant, I did it. Now that I am knowledgeable, now that I have understood it, I will not, I will not do it. But sir, uh, what is the, what is the consequence of what I did in the past? What is the consequence of that? Whatever the consequence is, you have to face it, that's it. Courage. Are you able to follow? Not to repeat it and the courage to and the courage to take it. Worry. That's how you manage the worry. But sir, I, I will not repeat it. But is there a method by which uh, any prashchitta you can suggest? Any prashchitta can you suggest? Vedanta comes and says, if you know of any prashchitta, you tell me, we'll also come and join that prashchitta. <laughs> Can I do anything now to offset that? Only one thing that can offset that is knowledge and understanding. It is knowledge and understanding. The fear. Future means the fear. Past means guilt. Future means fear. Are you okay with these two synonyms that I am using with this pair? Guilt and fear as past and future. Is it clear? Yeah, Ram Subramani, Puri da, correct arg da, okay. Because I am assuming I am, I am knowing what I am talking. As long as you know what I am talking, I am okay. I don't know what I am saying. If you know, very good. Ganesh, Puri da, 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 fear, guilt and, guilt and fear. 
guilt and fear. Guilt is useless because not willing to accept your own ignorance of the past, that is foolishness. In the past, I was ignorant and an ignorant person would have done that only. What else an ignorant person will do? Therefore, you don't go on whipping yourself. That is overcoming the worry of the past. Overcoming the worry of the past means overcoming these minds uncontrolled going into the into the past and making you relive it again and again and again. Every time you relive it again and again and again, you are only aggravating it further in the present. That's why he always says it is like as the wound is healing, you will scratch it. As the wound is healing, you will scratch it. So for all practical purposes, you are the one who is not allowing it to you are the one who is not allowing it to heal. You not allowing the past to heal is worry of the past. You not allowing the past to let go is what is called as worry of the, the past. Just allow it to Heal. What is allowing it to heal means not reliving it again. Not really, oh, why I did it, I should not have done it. Why I did it, I should not have done it. It will, it will always go to the, that's why I always say, mind having an affinity to negativity is, will always go into that, will, will always go into that and it will become a kind of a habit now. That is in relation to the worry. The guilt. Second is in relation to the second is in relation to the future, what is called as fear. So worry and anxiety replace it as guilt and fear. Imagine a human being who is free of these two. Hmm? That itself looks looks like a, almost like an enlightened state, isn't it? A person who's free of the a person who's free of these two itself almost look like enlightenment. Guilt and fear. Yes. Fear and insecurity same. Is fear and insecurity the same? Yes. Both are one and the same. The clarification is, is fear and insecurity the same? Yes. You are so insecure and you want security and what will you do? To overcome the insecurity, the only way is you need security. That security comes only proofs are given. That security comes when a proof is given. You follow? And who will give proof? Who will give, who will give these kind of a proofs, assurances? That's why I said some time back. You depending on the drunken man's promise. The drunken man promises something. What value you will give to that? You will not give any value. Why? Because he is not. When Rama decided to go to the forest because Dasharatha said, one of the arguments that was given to Rama is, Rama, Dasharatha in some emotional state gave that, gave that boon. And Kaikeyi is now exploiting that. Why are you thinking it is your obligation? We all will argue to that agreement, no? Are you able to follow? Dasaratha, in some emotional state, gave, gave a boon to Kaikeyi. Now, what is Kaikeyi doing? Exploiting that, exploiting that, that boon. This man is emotional. 
this lady is exploiting, why are you taking it as your obligation? Correct? What will you do? Ram Subramanian, put the dilemma. What will you do? Appa, correct. At least for the welfare of the country, I will, I will not go to forest and run the kingdom. Huh? You follow what I am saying? Hmm? It is e e proof. Are you able to follow? Proof is nothing but demanding dependent on an intoxicant person's mental state. Will you depend on that? If you depend on that, you will be disappointed. Are you able to follow? You will be disappointed. And that disappointment will, will further fuel your insecurities. Will further fuel your insecurity. Always remember this. Security can come from a source that is stable. Security can come only from a source that is stable. An unstable source cannot give you security. You go and seek security from the other person. Because of your insecurity, you go and seek security from the other person. The other person being exactly like you, who is also fundamentally insecure, seeks security from, from you. So both will say, we will be there for each other. Isn't it? So they make promises. What are the promises they make in life? That we will be there for each other. Krishna will come and say, it is like two intoxicated people talking. It is like two intoxicated people. Why? Why? Because security can come from that which is fundamentally stable. So, stability is that which gives security. That's why we say family unit has to be stable. Uh, the, 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 the environment has to be stable. The society has to be stable. In the, in, in stable, in the stability, there is a sense of calmness and peace, etc., so, security can come from a source that which has to be inherently stable. That which is inherently, intrinsically stable alone can give you security. That which is intrinsically, that which is, technically speaking, stability must be the swabhava of an entity that can give you security. Again, I repeat. Again, I repeat. Stability must be the swabhava of that entity. Swabhava means its intrinsic nature. Its intrinsic nature must be of security and that alone can make you feel secure. That's why we say, if at all you want security, security can come from the divine only. For nothing else can, for nothing else can give Security. Are you able to follow? Therefore, security can come from that source which is intrinsically stable. One insecure person cannot give security to another insecure person. Today what is happening is, one insecure person is giving security to another. Now, now when we say stable family, what does it mean? The father and mother are stable, secure. Something is there which is secure. That is what we call a stability. Isn't it? So, security can always come from a source that which is stable by nature. That which is intrinsically insecure cannot provide you with security. Why? Because that source itself is also looking for security. Hmm? A fundamental insecurity. How do you overcome that? When a person starts doing that which they ought to do and not falling for temptations will start experiencing stability security. 
again i repeat a person doing that which ought to be done in spite of temptations hmm? in spite of temptations in spite of the mind not cooperating when a person does what what ought to be done that doing that which ought to be done in spite of all this is what is that which gives security relatively because when we say god alone can give security what does it what does it mean when we say god alone can give security you can't go to the temple and sit in front of an idol and say make me secure no that will doubt uh, that will create more doubt you know? because you won't know whether the god has heard you rightly or not and you won't know whether god understands your language and you have to worry about what language god knows now isn't it so what is divine means divine means security means when a person does what one ought to do in spite of temptations in spite of temptations and difficulties if a person does what one ought to do there is a source of inner strength and that inner strength gives security are you able to follow now how to overcome the fear insecurity every time you say no to this insecurity by saying no i will not care about what's going to happen tomorrow let me do what i have to do today let me do what i have to do today over a period of time this person will start experiencing security are you able to follow so this is how first we first we discussed what is worry and anxiety and then we moved on to past and future and then we moved on to guilt and guilt and fear this is how you understand worry and anxiety yes so is guilt a state of non acceptance where i am not able to accept that i can do it and asking myself how can i do it i shouldn't have done it you can't say like that is guilt arising out of non non acceptance of okay. yes that is why the mind is simply going into the past unable to accept that i was ignorant that because of my ignorance i did it if i have accepted it it will not go non acceptance it is it is the non acceptance that makes a person feel feel guilty what is non acceptance non acceptance is a non acceptance is nothing but a kind of neurotic state about being a perfectionist almost insanity it is that is why we say it is it is it is uh, acceptance acceptance of what you have a standard of perfection you have a standard of everything isn't it See? like for example no creature on this planet will go to a beauty parlor that's all isn't it that's all it is no creature on this planet will go to a beauty parlor isn't it yesterday we were standing there trying to that uh, no standing there in the queue she was so i thought she is going to do something she just opened her uh, you know that 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 small bag they 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 call what is that vanity kit ha huh? huh? vanity kit no that is called correct vanity bag vanity kit na adu vanity bag na enna pa vijay theriyada ha unu genu kand prayojanamey illa makeup kit vanity kit na makeup yeah if you don't have you will make it up that's why it's called makeup isn't it that which you don't have you will make it up 
standing there, she opened that. Not that there's anything wrong, nothing wrong. She's, uh, she started nail polish and took the mirror and, and took the mirror out where? In the, right in the, standing there in the queue. And, and she took the passport also. Supposing the passport she didn't take, I would have gone to the next counter. And she took the passport and kept and started doing all this. Not that she came in a hurry, not that she came in the rain, drenched. Nothing is wrong. But suddenly the thought, what is the thought? A non-acceptance. Maybe I am dirty. Maybe I don't look good. Now I have to do something and make myself good. Are you able to follow? A non-acceptance. A non-acceptance. It is so, it is so deadly it is. So guilt comes out of that. Guilt arises out of that non-acceptance. Non-acceptance is because of a weird neurotic state of perfectionism. I just want to make sure that I am doing the right thing, sir. Vedanta comes and says, you can only do right and wrong, God only knows. I just want to make sure that I want, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just checking so that I don't do anything wrong. I just want to ensure that I do the right thing always. I'm very careful that I'll want to do the right thing always. That fellow will never do anything. That fellow, that person can't do anything at all. Why? Because the mind always says this, this will go, this can go wrong, that can go wrong, or this, you, this went wrong there, that went wrong there, this happened, that happened. Now it, 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 it will go on reinforcing that you have a standard of perfection and you will never ever fit that standard of perfection. You have a standard of perfection and you will never ever fit that standard of perfection. This gap is neurotic. This gap is what makes you feel so, so miserable. This gap. Knowledge comes and says, mm -hmm. comes and says, why are you, why are you poking at yourself all the time like this? The Vedas, the Upanishad doesn't say perfect doing. The Vedas, the Upanishad says Shraddha doing. Whatever you do, you do it with Shraddha. Are you able to understand the difference? Vedas and Upanishads will never talk about perfect doing. Vedas and Upanishads will always talk about Shraddha. doing it with Shraddha. Shraddha means A. Shraddha means an acceptance of at any given point of time, you can act only according to the limitations of your skill. An acceptance of that. Doesn't mean you will not try to Learn or better, at, but at any point of time, you 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 understand that you accept that. Otherwise, what happens? To do everything perfectly, you should not have a mind. As long as you have a mind, you can only do it sincerely. A thing without a mind can do it perfectly, like a machine. It can do it because it doesn't have a mind. Human is a species that lives through the mind, can only do it Sincere. sincerely. That sincere doing is what we call as Shraddha. Shraddha van labate jnanam. This person of Shraddha alone gains the truth. All right. So, what is what is important is sincere doing, not perfect doing. So, guilt is always because of the, the, this is perfection, this is perfection, this is where I am. I am not able to, I am not fit, I am not fit, I am not fit. Oh, why am I born like this? If I was born there, if I am this, if I am that, if my nose is all right, if my ears is all right, isn't it? Mind will keep on saying 200 things. If this is if if this was all right, if that was all right, if this this the all that isn't it? It's so easy for you, sir. You 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 got into it at a very young age. That's why it's so easy for you. 
who told you that it was easy because you take to it at a very young age because at that age also you have certain things that you have to fight no <laughs> oh it's so easy you could you, 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 if it is young means it's very easy who, who said if a young means it will be easy old means it will be difficult at any given point of time sincerity means clipping the past and the future what is shraddha shraddha means clipping the past clipping the future that's what shraddha is you follow therefore in one word overcome worry how to overcome worry and anxiety one word shraddha 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 means dedicated doing sincere doing not perfect doing not perfect doing sincere doing to be perfect you need to have two things a perfectionist to be a perfectionist you need two things what is it a skill that will never ever require it require any more betterment is that is there a state like that is there a skill that will never ever require any betterment it means how much ever you do you can still they you can always say you can still do it better you can still do it better okay you get 100 on 100 is that betterment no no next week exam what will happen huh? 100 100 100 100 100 always ever 100 oh my god it will be a uh, Eighth wonder, no? Ah, not uh, first wonder of this planet. First, first wonder of the total creation will be this. Are you able to follow? Perfectionist is neurotic because perfectionism can, like, that's why I always say, if Shankara were to revisit the Bhashya and rewrite the Bhashya, he will make 15 corrections. If, if Adi Shankaracharya were to revisit his Bhashya, he will make 15 corrections. Does that mean we are all reading the wrong, uh, wrong Bhashya, wrong commentary? It's not there. Are you able to follow? So, there is no such thing called that weird state of unchanged thing that we have in our head as perfection. Are you able to follow? Perfection. Second, at any given point of time, your doing will be affected by your state of mind. So you have to give some leverage to that also. Your doing will always be affected by your state of mind and your state of mind keeps fluctuating, varying. So it means, Shraddha means dedication with what? Limitation and skills plus fluctuating mind. In spite of fluctuating mind and limit and, and limitation and skill, I can be sincere. Correct? That is Shraddha. That is freedom from worry and anxiety. In spite of these two, you can be. That is freedom from worry and anxiety. In spite of limitations of the skill, in spite of the fluctuating state of mind, my free will, my purushartha can always be employed for doing it sincerely. Correct? That is Shraddha. Employing the free will to do it, to do it sincerely is, is Shraddha. Accepting these two. What are the two? Limitations, Limitations of the skill plus Fluctuating. Plus fluctuating. That's why we say, okay, yeah, that person would have been in a very bad mood today. Leave it, we say. Why? Don't, don't, don't pay so much of importance to it. Leave it. But he said it, no. I think that fluctuated mind, everybody goes through these fluctuations. But, uh, today is a bad day at office. Huh? Today is a good day. Today is a bad day. So, Shraddha means accepting the limitations plus fluctuations or not allowing the limitations and fluctuations to disturb my sincerity. This sincerity is strength. This sincere person will be free from worry and anxiety. 
worry and anxiety means guilt and fear. Are you able to follow? This is in relation to worry and anxiety. Next week, desires. So, two things we have overcome now. What are the two things we have overcome already? Ragadvesha. Ragadvesha. Guilt and fear. Two things we have overcome. Oh my God. One by one you overcome, you will get enlightened at the end of the chapter. You will come out enlightened. We will continue with the desires. We will continue with the desires next week. So there's a question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, please, yeah. please. Sorry. Who has? I, Anshu has a question. She's posted it. Anshu has a question and she posted it. Let me see where to, where she posted it now. Ah. Okay. Our past is a memory, does not exist anymore. Future does not exist. The present changes into past even before we realize. How can we rightly understand the present? Our past is a memory. Does not exist anymore. Mahavakya number one. <laughs> Mahavakya number two. Future does not exist. The present changes into past even before we realize. This is Upanishad. <laughs> now the question. How can we rightly understand the present? Anshu. <laughs> why are you complicating it so much now? <laughs> huh? How do you rightly understand the present? Present is the opportunity that is there in front of you, which you can rightly make use of. That is known as present. Present means not the time. Present means opportunity. You got an opportunity. The, 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 the opportunity that is available in front of you is called, is known as the present. And Making right use of it is rightly understanding the present. Are you able to follow? So present here, don't use the word present in terms of time factor. Mm -hmm. Don't use the word. That's why mm -hmm. from past and future I moved on to because past and few past, present, future and all, the thinking will get into the direction of the time. That's why from past and future, I quickly moved on, moved on to guilt and fear. Okay. Past, present and future. Guilt, opportunity, fear. Action. What is present? The opportunity that you have now is the present. The now could be the second. The now could be this hour, could be this day, could be this janma, could be anything. So, are able to follow. So, present means the opportunity that is there available to you is the present. Human birth you have is an opportunity. Jantu naam narajanma durlabam. So, present doesn't mean this second. Present means the, the, the entire lifetime is the present. Are able to follow? The entire life that you have is present. So it means understand present means what? Present as not in the time factor, present as an opportunity. There is an opportunity in front. And you can make right you and you can make right use of that opportunity. When you are making right use of that opportunity, you have rightly understood what present means. That's why we say present means. Long back, in one of the discussions in the in the academy I'm talking about, when I was studying there, I said present means the three year I said. Present means the three years is the present. Then, then you know what you can do, what you cannot do. Suppose if you take strict definition of time as in present, that's what you are saying. Present changes into past even before we... We realize, we know, no, 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 that is not present. That is a chronological time thing. Here, here when we're talking about past, present and future, 
past equals guilt. Write it down like that. For, for I am not saying equal. I am saying it. It, it can. It, it's a. It's a lead for reflection. Past is in relation to the guilt. Anxiety is in relation to the anxiety is in relation to the future. Opportunity is in relation to the present. For the child that is doing a three-year course, four-year course degree, what is the present? The four years is the present. Isn't it? That four years is the present. In that four years, someday will be good, someday will be bad. But present means the whole four years must be taken as present. Are you able to follow? Someday, someday it will be very good, someday it will be very bad. But what is present? That four years is the present. Then, then, then you can give yourself some, some room to move around without, without getting too disturbed emotionally. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, otherwise, we get too disturbed emotion. Is it okay, Anshu? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even though she is listening to worry and anxiety, she is still listening to. She is still thinking about what were, uh, what we were uh, talking. So Mahavakyava, she is asking. Yes, Venkata Chalo. Chalunga. First, let us decide where, whether they are going to give you permission or not. Wait, wait, they will give you permission. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I got the permission. Yeah. But my question relates to a brief comment you made about free will. You yes. mentioned that the free will ah. that you can develop the Shraddha. Yes. And always the question is, do we have a free will or are we pre-programmed because of the vasanas or yes. our continuation of the karma, build up yes. of the karma? Yes. And why is our intellect not helping us mm. uh, to, uh, to follow the free will or yes. take a course on free will? Yeah. Now... Are we pre-programmed or free will? Mishram, mixture. It's a mixture of both. Okay. Human being is a mishram, mixture of both. Meaning, you cannot say everything is pre-programmed, neither can you say everything is free will. It's a, it's a mixture. So, first thing that we understand is mishram. Mishram means mixture. In that mixture, we should be like that uh, that bird Anna Pakshi, they say, no? Yeah. Only drinks water. Right. Ah, only, that, drink, only drinks a milk. Ah, correct. The divine mystical bird, you 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 give milk in front, it will take the water out and drink the milk. I don't know if you take the water out, what will remain there, isn't it? So it means what? That which is so mixed where you can never know what is what, you have the ability to distinguish. It means that. You follow? So why the, uh, why the intellect is not able to do that? Because the intellect is hijacked by the greed of the mind. The greed of the mind hijacks, takes over. Oh. It is the greed of the mind that makes it, that makes the that makes the thing not available. You follow? The greed means uh, knowing should instantly result in trans understanding the information should quickly result in transformation. That is greed. 
what is greed accept ah uh, understanding the information should result in transformation this this great uh, scientist said my scientific knowledge he he won the nobel prize my scientific knowledge and understanding is telling me the world is billions and billions of years old and galaxies etc but my christian conditioning is unwilling to accept it is still telling me world is 6000 years old are you able to understand yeah he is saying my conditioning is refusing to accept even though even though he is even though he has won the nobel prize the you follow what i am saying so 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 there are two things that is happening parallelly in a human being there is one process information understanding the information etc that is running in one direction the mind running in its own direction and both don't both don't both doesn't seem to meet at all are able to follow yeah. or wherever information wherever understanding happened wherever understanding happens in immediate what follows immediately is a hope for transformation instead of using the word hope i say the greed for transformation why because the information that i have understood versus how old the jiva is how many times this jiva would have understood and forgotten and be in this condition how many times would have? so so what is the uh, what is the method now using the free will purushartha using the free will what is the free will free will is always free will appears powerless against the backdrop of karma when you compare the power of karma and the power of free will the free will logically the power of free will will be will be small compared to the power of the karma correct are you able to follow what i am saying always it will appear yes. always it will appear so each and every drop keeps each and every drop keeps it keeps it changing isn't it in tamil they say no the ants crawling makes the erumbu oora oora kallum karayum they say kall means the rock ant is how fragile ant is See, you make an ant walk on a paper will it leave any mark so fragile it is but that ant has the capability of ensuring that it can make a road in the in the stone are you able to follow granite stone karungal it means what the power of the free will Com, uh, in comparison to the power of the karma always seems appear appear the mistake is i am using the most of the human beings use the purushartha free will in the present to perpetuate the past that's why it is becoming more and more powerless are you able to follow as i was discussing today even in the present what does a human being do by free will by using the free will the past is perpetuated so the past is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger while i believe that oh my god my effort has no meaning at all you follow so understand it in two ways one is the collective karma versus the power it is like the granite stone versus an ant karungal versus an ant second is in the present don't perpetuate the past the past most of the human beings keeps perpetuating the past in the present how do we perpetuate the past in the present worry worry that's why we say ignore let go 
ignore, let go, ignore, let go. Various methods of ignoring and letting it go is what we are. So by this, by this mixture and of, uh, by this trying this various things, it 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 works. It's okay. Did I help you, Vangda Yes. Yeah, that's how it happens. Thank you. With this, we conclude for today. We'll continue with desires next week. <laughs>